Pay us some up. Can I go now, Chief? Can I? Huh? Huh? Now listen, Super Boeing. Get back and warm that bench. This here calls for experience. We leave the Super Service and go to Fort Knox, Kentucky, where a sinister car comes to a stop in front of the gate. Out of the car steps a weird little snowman named Cold Pinky. When he reaches the gate, an armed guard commands him to halt. Halt! Who goes there? It's only me, little Cold Pinky. All right, man! Fire! Cold Pinky raises his little pinky and freezes them right in the middle of their bam. At the gold storage vault, Cold Pinky takes out an ice pick and chops a hole in the door. Nobody can rob Fort Knox with an ice pick but me. Meanwhile, back at the Super Service office... Day or night save us. What? What's that? Fort Knox robbed? But who will I put on it? This is a job for Superboy. Zip, zam, zowie, and shoo! There's Fort Knox. Now to get in and look for clues. I must have had a blizzard here. In the middle of July, too. I'll have to use my powerful laser beam vision to burn a hole in the wall. Those dirty guys, they set a booby trap. What a neat way to smuggle the gold out of town. <laughs> there is only one difficulty. Kids keep chasing us. Why don't we stop and swipe their dimes, huh? <laughs> There's an ice cream truck down there. I'll ship down and get an ice cream bar. Hey, mister! I'll have a chocolate... I guess he doesn't have chocolate. Superboing ponders the situation and decides to investigate all suspicious-looking vehicles. Aha! There's a cement mixer. They've probably got the gold hidden in it. I demand you to turn the contents of this truck over to me. Hey, how are we gonna get down? What's that down there? It's the entrance to their tunnel. Okay, Fatso, I see you crouching there in the dark. It won't do you any good to struggle. I've got a headlock on you. So, I want to play rough, huh? Superboy descends on freshly dug soil. So this is where they bury the gold. Well, I'll just unbury it. He becomes a human drill. A business district is built over the hole. Underground, you hear the far-off voice of Superboy. I can't find any gold. I might as well surface. Ouch! So, try to bury me under a skyscraper, huh? This is evidence. Probably couldn't have stood up in court anyway. Cold Pinky's sinister pirate yacht steams seaward. You sure handled the gold job smooth. I owe it all to my little pinky. <laughs> Look, boss, what's that? It can't be. It is. 
It's Super Boing. I stole the gold, but you will never tell, because I am putting you on ice. Cold Pinky points his finger at Super Boing, but Super Boing counteracts with his laser beam vision. It's no use, Cold Pinky. The heat is on. The laser beam turns Cold Pinky to slush. The victorious Super Boing returns to headquarters to make his report. Chief, I got Cold Pinky right here in the bucket. What'll I do with him? Mop the floor with him. He deserves it. And besides, the floor needs it. Aw, oh, shucks. This is a job for Super Boing? Well, there, there's only 30 seconds to play, elevator man. Let's kick this one over the goalpost for the winning point. Now, be sure you don't miss. You just hold the ball steady, and I'll make sure I don't miss. <laughs> So, so, something tells me I, I should have stood in bed. Well, well what do you know? I, I think I made a touchdown. This idea of bringing them back alive. Couldn't they be half dead or something? With me guiding you, you got nothing to worry about. I know Africa backwards. But we're not going backwards. This cliff, good observation point for signs of wild animals. There isn't one within miles of us. And I'm glad, too. Kushla McCree. Jump quick. <laughs> And tis the sweet bells of Dublin I'm hearing. That tree came right out of nowhere. Then take your gander on what's on the end of it. Oh, a big Irish gorilla. Are you sure this is Africa? Who cares? Look at the size of him. Hey, we got a gold mine here. That's my jibbers, my jabbers. Tis the little people. I the top of the morning, the bottom of the evening, and both sides of the afternoon to you. Truth, it's a lucky day for me. It is, it is. Well, it certainly isn't very lucky for us. I think I'm going to scream. All right, put us down, you big monkey. Not before you be taking me to your pot of gold. Now, what'll it be? Heads or... <laughs> Come on, me buckles. Speak up, speak up. Big ape makes small error. We no leprechaun. We people. I the way people it is, it is. And you'd not be trying to pull me leg, would you? <laughs> yow, 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 yow. Tis the silver tongue of the blarney you have. <laughs> Let's have no more of it and be taking me to the pot of gold. Possibly you creating unpleasant international situation. Yeah, wait till the embassy hears about this. Oh, there. Not so fast, me buckos. Me heart is big, but me patience is small. Now be leading me to that gold. Let's not antagonize him. Let's lead him to the gold. What gold? Don't you know where there's any gold? No, I don't know where there's any gold. Oh, dear. Oh, I was afraid of that. Hey, the devil, you say. The Blarney Stone itself will float in the River Shannon the day I believe a word of it. Ah, have idea. Monkey see, monkey do. Catch on? I get you. Please to observe, Mr. King Size Ape. Leprechaun must stir brain with shillelagh in order to think clearly. His very good mental exercise suggests you do same. If it be helping find the gold, I'll do it to oblige. Now repeat after me. Now you turn. Strange are the ways of the wee folk, but if you insist. Ugh, 
next time you use your head, leave us out. I suggest we head for home. We got away from that ape once. I don't see why we have to monkey around with him again. He's the only one of his kind. He's worth a fortune. Ah! He waiting for bait with baited bread. Kushla McCree! Tis a sky hook as sure as I live and breathe. I'll be giving it a tug for good luck. He's hooked! Pull him up! The sweet music of McNamara's band is trickling through me head, it is. I think we give him a temporary conclusion. I deal time to bailing out! Head for the hills, and it's every man for himself. Collection, please. Very obvious, we must stick together. Look out! If you're Irish, come into the parlor. Tura Lura Lay, I always wanted me on yo-yo. Around the world. And walk the dog. <laughs> Tis jolly good fun we're having. Now will you tell me where your pot of gold is? Faith in Begora. Now where are the devil? Did the little devils go? We're rid of that stupid gorilla at last. Don't be too sure. Confusion, say. Sometime bad penny turn up when least expected. But jabbers, but jabbers, don't leave yet. You haven't took me to the pot of gold. Oh, we hate to leave on such short notice, Mr. Gorilla. But we've got a heavy date in, uh, Hollywood. Hollywood? Is it a nice sort of jungle? You might say that. Fine. You talked me into it. I'll go along with you. Steady now, my ladies. I'm coming aboard. <laughs> Kushla McCree. They've disappeared again. Eh, there you are. <laughs> now I'll not be leaving your side till we found that pot of gold. This very embarrassing situation. Lose much face. Skip it. In Hollywood, who'll notice him? Here, Mr. Gorilla, sir. We'll wipe the cement off. Sure and Begara, I knew if I stuck to you lads, you'd lead me to a pot of gold. <laughs> You know, I, I heard that a volcano erupted in Italy last week. I, I wonder if it did much damage. Holy smokes, did it ever do damage? Well, look what it did to that building. Well, this looks like a job for Super Boing. <coughs> I, I'll have this fixed up in a jiffy. There. Yeah, that's better. It seems like a silly place to, to have a lighthouse anyway. I'm Elevator Man. I get all kinds of jobs, big ones, little ones. I never know what my assignment will be from one day to the next. Like most guys, my work has its ups and downs. When I'm not fighting traffic, my business is fighting crime. That's a living. This is Super Service Central. It's headquarters for a group of us superheroes. I checked in to see if the chief had any messages for me. Any messages for me, chief? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Captain O'Connor at police headquarters wants you to call him right away. I placed the call. I wondered what O'Connor had on his mind. I soon found out. O'Connor was excited. He told me the police had nabbed Brains Benson, the notorious mobster, and they were holding him overnight in city jail. O'Connor said Benson was slated to go to the state pen in the morning, but his mob had sworn to set him free. O'Connor needed some help, so I told him I'd be right over. I'll be right over. Okay, and step on it. Whee! 
That's what I call stepping on it. Well, I try to take everything in stride. O'Connor told me that he wouldn't rest easy till Brains Benson was safely up the river. I won't rest easy until... All right, all right, I know. Just show me to his cell. You see, Captain, it's perfectly simple. I merely press the up button on my elevator man control belt like this. Believe me, nobody's gonna get in or out of this cell unless I move. And I never move until I'm good and ready. Hey, that's great, elevator man. I knew you were the guy for the job. Well, see you in the morning. I settle myself down for the long night's vigil. The hours passed slowly. It was getting late and I was getting sleepy. Then suddenly, I wasn't sleepy anymore. It wasn't until later that I figured out what had happened. A couple of Brain Benson's henchmen had flooded the jail with sleeping gas. It knocked out everyone in the building, including yours truly. Hey, James, are you okay? Yeah. Now get me out of here before this gas gets to me. How are we going to move this big lug? I must weigh a ton. Press the down button on that belt of his. That ought to make him smaller. Okay, boss. Hey, look at that guy shrink. Ain't that remarkable? Come on already. Drag him out of the way. Time's a waster. Now, get over here and blast this lock. Uh, certainly, boss. Good work, boys. Now let's get out of here. You want I should give him a blast too, boss? Nah, he don't look like he'll give us any more trouble. Let him keep shrinking, and when he gets small enough, the cat will eat him. <laughs> Come on, let's blow. Five minutes and ten sizes later, I woke up. I didn't notice I'd shrunk right out of my belt. Then I got a strange feeling that I was being watched. I was right. It was the jailhouse cat. And he looked hungry, being about five inches tall and still shrinking. I didn't feel like I was in a position to reason with him. So I made a dive for the nearest exit. And just in time. Boy, was it dark in there. Groping my way around, I suddenly bumped into something warm, fuzzy, and big. It felt like it was a giant mouse. It was obvious that he didn't appreciate my waking him up, so I dashed to a neutral corner. Gradually, as my eyes became accustomed to the dark, I saw a way out. A column of ants was marching through the mouse hole. I was still shrinking, so by now I was small enough to pass for one of them. The cat didn't spot me. As we were passing my belt, I made a break for it. This was my chance. I tried to push the up button. But it was no use. I was just too small. I couldn't budge it. I was doomed. I guess I was just going to keep shrinking smaller and smaller until one day I would just fade away. Then I saw it. One last chance. I hopped a passing ant rode up the wall, then got off at the shelf above the wash basin, and there was my lifesaver, a bar of soap balanced on the edge right above the belt. It was a cinch. I gave it the old heave-o and bombs away. It landed right on target, smack on the up. It gave me just what I needed, a big lift, and a better outlook. Aha, there they were. The Benson Bars speeding out of town. I left a note for Captain O'Connor to meet me at the state pen. Then I took off after the criminals. They were on the main highway and going about 100 miles an hour. I caught up with them in a jiffy and decided to try my hand at stopping them. To their amazement, the highway suddenly changed into a dead-end street. O'Connor was waiting for me when I arrived at the state pen. When I presented him with Brains Benson, his mob, and their getaway car, all neatly tied in a pink ribbon, he got all choked up with joy and told me it was the nicest gift he'd ever received. Tearing myself away from this tender scene, I headed for home. It had been a long night. 